Very great. How are you? How are you? Yeah, my pleasure. I'm yes. so happy to see you again. Um, since we last met, uh, we met last uh, yeah. last uh, December. Yeah. Exactly. And one of the things that uh, in our conversations we had talked about so many times, people said, "Well, what are we going to do about China?" And I, <clears throat> I decided my team and I pulled together a white paper. That has 120 different areas where we can begin to unravel our relationship with China, whether it's dealing with education or agriculture or um, looking at what is happening with trade or pharmaceuticals or our commercial sector. So, uh, people can pull that report down at blackburn.senate.gov. But Nathan is one of these. Uh, freedom fighters who has been on the front line of fighting for democracy and against Chinese imperialism. And I am just so pleased that he is here with us. You know, Nathan, not everybody follows uh, what is happening in Hong Kong as closely as you and I do. But it seems like if you are watching that things have kind of been uh, crashing down on the freedom fighters over the last yeah. uh, couple of months. So I want you to just walk us through briefly what has been happening and bring us up to today. Yes, I, I think um, a lot of uh, a lot of you guys uh, may have aware that uh, the the Hong Kong protests happened for the past year, and the latest news is uh, the implementation of national security law, which is a law that could indict political activists at the willingness of the Chinese Communist Party because the law is written in such a thick term. For example, there are clauses saying that oh, if you intrigue hatred towards the central government, you could be prosecuted. But no one has ever defined what kind of like what does what actions constitute intriguing hatred, and it leaves so much room for the government to interpret it. So uh, we've just seen arrests has made uh, in these uh, couple of days, especially um, just. Actually, just now, just an hour ago, there were several uh, uh, political activists in Hong Kong. They were arrested uh, under the national security law. The police knocked their door and then um, brought them out. And then they were sent to the police station. And we still don't know what happened to them. So these kind of uh, national security law really targets people's freedom of expression and making Hong Kong into a de facto police state that yeah, spread white terror. are referencing it also requires there to be education it requires that they have to promote this national security education so yeah. touch on what they're doing to brainwash students against freedom and for the propaganda for the communist party well, um, the education curriculum is under a serious scrutiny from uh, by the police, uh, by the communist uh, party, and well, basically all the content of like uh, fighting for freedom, democracy, or even uh, democratic movement, civil disobedience are being erased, and they substitute the concept of like authoritarianism. It's just another uh, ruling system that um, that is no better or worse than democracy or. Th well, praising the Communist Party as a very progressive party, things like that. So that kind of like system would really make students um, lacking the um, well critical thinking and uh, well being disguised of what is happening in Hong Kong and in China. And then in the past 48 hours, we're hearing that Carrie Lam may postpone the LEGCO elections. Is that correct? Yes, well, there are uh, rumors, still rumors, the government has not announced yet. But uh, there are news saying that uh, Carrie Lam, uh, well, she's asking the central government whether they should uh, postpone the election for a year. And that is absurd because none of the po uh, popularly elected officials are being consulted. No, uh, it's definitely a, a, a political move made by the government. Okay. And sometimes people will hear something that I've said on the floor when I am defending you all that are fighting for Hong Kong. And they will say, well, do you think there's any hope that Hong Kong can remain free and that the Hong Kong freedom fighters are going to prevail? 
So what do you say when people ask you that? Well, of course, um, I think for the past year, we have witnessed uh, the solidarity from around the world, especially in, in the U.S. and uh, with the help of a very strong bipartisan support. And uh, that kind of pressure could really make Beijing, uh, well, feeling um, pressured. And uh, indeed, for us, for Hong Kong people, we, we still continue to fight and we will never give up. And um, even though the situation is getting worse, uh, we, ha we, have ju we, we just have like four students are being arrested and they are facing serious charges that may, uh, well, uh, arise to the level of lifelong imprisonment and they are charged and arrested because of Facebook posts. So that is how terrible Hong Kong situation is. So four students put up a Facebook post and now they've been arrested. Well, uh, what well, you know, according to the uh, the police, that is the case. Oh my goodness! Okay, and you had to actually leave Hong Kong. Yes, I'm in London now, um, okay. because uh, you know, from the implementation of that, I would definitely be the top of their list. Uh, talk a little bit about that, because you had to give up your home, uh, you had to leave in order to protect your life. And that had to be a difficult decision. Well, yes, um, it's very difficult um, for me. Uh, leaving Hong Kong means I have to leave behind um, all my families and friends and my, uh, well, my two cats that I rescued on the street. Mm -hmm. But um, it's also a responsibility for, responsibility for myself. I could talk freely. I could deliver Hong Kong people's uh, true demands and, 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 well, what they are chanting on the streets. So it's important that I could talk to you, uh, Senator, and the others, that I could deliver the message uh, properly. And what do you think the future holds for China-Hong Kong relations? Where do you think, in the long run, that this is going to end up? Well, it's clear that China wants to quash Hong Kong by implementing the national security law. They want all Hong Kong people to be silent. They are arresting students because of Facebook posts. They want to, people to feel the terror and fear um, spreading white terror. But for us, what we want is to defend our autonomy and democracy. And that is very legitimate. That is, uh, well, uh, entabled in the uh, sino british Shaw Declaration and also getting support from around the world. So what we are doing is we, we fight for Hong Kong's future. We want it to be our city it's just not our city anymore. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, there are a lot of people that are standing with you all and are standing to encourage you and to wish you success in this fight and to push back on China and push back on Chinese imperialism and push back against the Maoist and Marxist uh, policies that they are following and are pushing back on what Xi Jinping wants for China because it's not modern day yeah. China. They are being forced to give up any little air of freedom that they have and turn it all over to the government and let the government be preeminent, let the Chinese Communist Party. And you know, one of the things we continue to talk about is that when people are doing business with China, they are doing business with the Chinese Communist Party. And it's yes, time exactly. for Americans to, to realize that and to think twice before they buy that um, linens or clothing or furniture or shoes that are made in China. Yeah, so, I agree. Uh, you know, yeah. because we see it, at, not only is it pharmaceuticals and our military complex and semiconductor chips and 5G, and uh, we're pushing back on a lot of different uh, fronts. So, hey, Nathan, we sure do appreciate you. And uh, we just continue to lift you up and we're praying for you and supporting you. And you guys keep up the good